Welcome to the Agent of Wealth podcast with Mark Boudis from Boudis Financial. In this podcast, Mark helps guide you towards financial freedom, ensure you never run out of money, and create a balance in life that prioritizes what is most important to you. Join us for this journey as Mark draws from years of expertise and guest experts to solve the multiple wealth building challenges involved in your financial life. Welcome back to The Agent of Wealth. This is your host, Mark Bowdis. On today's show, we're going to talk to Victoria Volk. Victoria is an advanced certified grief recovery specialist, Reiki master, UMAP certified coach, and end-of-life doula. She's also a self-published author and host of Grieving Voices podcast. Victoria aims to use her strengths and skills through a variety of offerings to help those whose lives have been upended by grief and loss to go from surviving to thriving. Victoria, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So I'm looking forward to talk about grief because I don't think it gets talked about enough or people sometimes don't know how to handle it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what are some of the the ways that people can, like you said, go from this really affecting them negatively to turning their lives into a positive thing. Before we get started, how would you describe grief? Grief is the loss of hopes, dreams, and expectations. And it's anything that you wish would have been or could be different, better, or more. People listening, they might think, well, what does grief have to do with a financial podcast, right? Or a podcast about money, but it really has everything to do with it because as someone who's going through a mental health challenge or has lost a loved one, or maybe you were the breadwinner and all of a sudden you can't work for whatever reason, or you put all of your 401k into some sort of adventure or you took a big risk, right? And you lost it all. I mean, there's grief in that. Yeah, I think that's one of the misconceptions. I think a lot of people, when they think of grief, they think of death. But like you said, there's many things that can bring it on. Does it have to be one event that brings it or is it something that can manifest or build up over time? The nature of grief is that it's cumulative and it's cumulatively negative. And so if you've lived long enough, you've experienced grief in many different forms, but you wouldn't necessarily probably call yourself a griever if you never had to bury somebody. And that's where my passion lies in educating people that grief isn't just about death. So imagine as a child, you lost your first pet. Your first pet died, it ran away. This is probably the first experience people have with loss. And your parents might say, oh, don't worry about it, Mark. We can go to the pet store next week and we can get a new dog. Never really acknowledging the relationship that you had with that first dog and that how much that loss has impacted you. Because for many parents, they haven't likely addressed their own grief in their own lives or haven't been taught the tools and healthy ways to do that. And so they resort to what they know and what they learned. And it's usually unhealthy. It's usually unhelpful. And so when their child experiences a loss, let's say they have to move a lot, or you're a child that had to move a lot, um, you might have a difficult time as an adult developing connections, deep connections with other people. All of these things in these experiences that we experience in childhood definitely influence and impact us as adults, including our ability to create wealth and abundance in our lives. So if you too were a child from a home where there was a lot of scarcity or lack, you know, living paycheck to paycheck, or there was just a lot of financial stress growing up in the home, that translates to your adulthood. And there's grief in that, but we just don't recognize it as grief. What's the difference between grief and, let's say, like sadness over an event or anxiety, stress, or even depression? Do they all fall under like one umbrella or are they different stages of how someone would feel about something? In my opinion, those feelings, anger, sadness, these are feelings. Depression can be a legitimate condition. I'm not minimizing that. But what's the root of the depression? These are all symptoms of a deeply rooted issue. Anxiety, 
grief manifests in many ways in our lives as adults and children too, because children don't necessarily learn these coping skills, right? For grief or traumatic events. They don't have to be big traumas either. Like I said, moving a lot or death of a pet can be as traumatic as a best friend dying for a child. And so as grief becomes cumulative, cumulatively negative, and it stacks up over time, as adults, eventually we either implode or we explode. And so we might exhibit behaviors that are unhealthy. We might have angry outbursts. We might start resorting to drugs or alcohol or workaholism or shopping or gambling. All of these behaviors that help us to feel better for a short period of time, but it's because we're not addressing the pain that we've experienced in our lives. And if we don't outwardly express it, likely it's taking a physical toll on our bodies. And it could be both as well. So you might experience um, high blood pressure, you know, sores on your skin, stomach ulcers, right? Migraines, fibromyalgia. There's like no known cause medically for fibromyalgia. I had a period of time actually years ago where I just had overall pain in my body, unexplainable. I know now it was just a body's response to everything that I was holding in that I wasn't able to release or let go because I didn't have the tools to do so. Children can exhibit these same patterns, right? There's the bad kid, but really they're just hurting. So yes, we all respond in our own way to grief. Like we all grieve in our own way. We all grieve differently, but overall, we kind of all have the same responses. It's just how it manifests for each of us, like whether it's in our, in our health or outwardly or in our relationships and things like that, because relationships are unique and we are in relationship with ourself. And so those are the factors that kind of determine how the grief will show up in your life. But overall, we've all learned these myths of grief, you know, grieve alone, don't feel bad, replace the loss. You have to be strong, strong for yourself and strong for others. These are things that we've all kind of been taught. And so when our backs are against the wall, we resort to what we know. And when it comes to grief, it's really unhelpful and it's harmful to ourselves. Are different people more susceptible to experiencing grief or grieving and having trouble, I guess, recovering than others? Do you see that some people just are able to handle it better than, than others? And I don't even know if better is the right word. I like how you said handle it better. And I think that is something I've often wondered myself. Like, how do some people seem to be more resilient? And that's the word I like to use, more resilient to life's challenges as opposed to others. That is something I'm personally interested in exploring. What I've learned for myself, I can say, is that experiencing trauma as a young child and lots of loss as a young child has shaped me into the adult I am today, right? But am I more resilient than someone who may first experience a lot of trauma or loss as an adult? Possibly. But because of these myths that we all learn unintentionally, right? Like we don't intend to teach our children to replace the loss and grieve alone and do all that stuff. It's just, these are learned behaviors that we all grow up with. But why is that, that some people seem to handle it better than others? I think it comes down to those myths. It's like the myth of be strong for yourself and be strong for others. And again, it depends on your upbringing. It depends on your home life. It I think it, so many factors come into that and how long it takes. I'll say that. How long it takes until someone has a loss that is the loss that kind of takes them over the edge, so to speak, where you get sick and tired of being sick and tired type of thing. On that, how does someone know this is time to talk to someone or seek out professional help with trying to get over whatever they're experiencing? It's getting to know yourself. I think we, we get so bogged down with expectations and so many of us are walking around and we don't really even know ourselves like what are your values what do you value in life 
I don't even know. How do I figure out my values? <laughs> what are your strengths? What do you bring to the table? I think if you've grown up too in a home where your individuality wasn't praised, where it wasn't nurtured, you kind of become a chameleon in life. You might lack self-confidence. You might not have the best judgment. I mean, there's so many aspects or circumstances that shape how you respond to to life and the challenges of life. Yeah. You mentioned some of the myths, right? Be strong, you know, don't talk about it or replace the loss. If those aren't necessarily what to do, what should someone do to get over it? The goal is not to get over it. The goal is to have enough self-awareness to recognize that you are not living to your fullest potential. And I think that's where it comes back to knowing yourself. We are a society that's so busy always doing. That's one of the myths too, keep busy, right? Oh, I'll just pour myself into work. I'll pour myself into my friends or this relationship and I'll just kind of sweep everything else under the rug. I don't need to deal with that. That's in the past. I've let it go. You think you've let it go, but it's manifesting and it's showing up in different ways. You just don't recognize it. Another myth of grief is time heals all wounds. It just takes time. You know, and you have a loss, you know, and it's been a year or five years, or in my case, 30, you should be over it by now. <laughs> People say this. Right. There is no timeline to grief, but there can be a transformation of it if we are able to recognize that your life does not have to look that way. Like for me personally, I thought I was just meant for a life of suffering because really that's really all I felt I knew. And... I didn't have hope. I didn't recognize my own potential. And I thought there was just something wrong with me. I thought it was me. I thought there was something wrong with me. And I think that's where a lot of people get into that space of, well, I guess I'm just screwed for the rest of my life. And it doesn't have to be that way. My favorite all-time quote is by the founder of UMAP, Kristen Sherry. And she has said, the more you know yourself, the less you look to others to tell you who you are. And that resonates with me so deeply. And I wholeheartedly believe that that is true. We, as a society, are so preoccupied with everything outside of ourselves. Just today, I actually came across something, and it's, it was about reputation is just the thoughts of other people. Focus on the internal before you focus on the external. And I think if we start doing that more, Regardless of who you are, regardless of your occupation, because grief does not discriminate, we are all grievers and we all grieve at 100%. There are no half grievers, right? We just, again, we don't identify ourselves as a griever because we've all lost something or lost someone. There is something that we wish would be different, better, or more about our lives. We all had or have these expectations for our relationships or for ourselves or for where we should be in our lives, for how much money we should be making. Why do I have all these expectations? Why do I feel like I'm, I'm not where I want to be? Look at that. Dive deep. And people don't want to dive deep. It's scary. Is it because they don't want to or they don't know how to? Like, What's an example of a way maybe that you would guide someone or help someone to do that? And you had asked, what do you do about it? And so I'm glad that this came back up. My last client, she said it perfectly herself. She was like, you know, people say you got to do the work. It's so annoying. Why do people say, do the work, do the work? Well, what's the work? <laughs> My program is Do Grieve Differently. It's a 12-week, one-on-one program. And she's like, this is the work. It's looking at my pain, looking at what's happened to me in the past, recognizing the patterns that have repeated throughout my life, throughout my relationships, so I can change it, so I can choose differently, so I can address it, so I can come to a place of forgiveness, so I can apologize where I need to apologize, so I can move forward beyond the pain. It's not saying you'll never get sad again. Even if you've buried your best friend or your spouse or wh whomever, it's not saying that you'll never get sad again. But the difference is when you address the pain is that when you think about it, it doesn't derail you for the whole day or a week or months, 
you don't tailspin into this downward spiral abyss of hopelessness and defeat. It's empowering when you can look at your past, honor it, and truly release what you've been holding on to emotionally that has been incomplete for you. And that's really what the program is all about. It's addressing what is emotionally incomplete. We uh, initially talked about grief relating to financial loss, and that could be a lot of different things from a job loss to someone not feeling they are in the you know right financial position that they should be in to someone losing all their money in an, in an investment. And I'm sure there's countless others. Is the approach to grief recovery any different or with the financial loss related to some other type of loss? And I guess that's really asked, is there a separate way to approach depending on what type of grief someone's going through? And this is the beautiful thing about this is that people can come to the program and think they're going to work on one thing. After the first three to four weeks, three to four sessions, they realize, oh, there's connection there. This is where this is coming from. Sometimes we can work on one loss with a person that unravels so much for us emotionally that it's, it's almost like a full swoop of emotional stuff that we've been carrying into other aspects of our lives. So the approach is not different. It is the same. But the recommendation is to actually work on relationships with at least two people before you work on intangible losses, which I... Um, would describe as those losses that you can't, it's not with a person, right? It's loss of trust. It's loss of safety, financial loss, loss of self. So many of us, when we're, we've gone through so much in our lives, we feel like we've lost a part, a part of ourselves. Again, that's a coming back to knowing yourself. And it's a full circle program. It really does come full circle because You start to recognize these things from your childhood that you've probably buried, good and bad, right? Positive and negative. Like there's positive aspects about you or your personality or things that you loved as a child that you've completely just dismissed as an adult. We forget how to nurture our creativity and the importance of play as adults. And so you kind of come back to that as you address these deeply emotionally wounding things and experiences that have happened. Once someone goes through your program, do you see them more susceptible to, I'm going to use the word relapse. I don't know if that is the right word because it's usually associated with other things, but are they now more likely to grieve another event or even that same event that they had gotten through? Will that come back up again and they'll have to grieve again? I can speak for myself personally and the clients that I've worked with you'll always discover maybe something more, right? It's like peeling back an onion. There's layers to it. We really do dive deep into the relationship within the program, but there might be something else that reminds you later down the road of something. There is a process for addressing that in the program, you know, continually. But this is like, this isn't a one and done. And this is a thing where people, I think we, as a society too, we're looking for this magic pill, right? We're looking for that in and out, the quick fix. This is an ongoing process. And I know people don't want to hear that. So I worked on a relationship with one of the relation, because I've worked on many, right? This is, once you start doing the work, you continue to do the work because you see the results. I particularly worked on a relationship with the man that sexually abused me. I just thought about this the other day. It's like, huh, I've truly let that go. I was able to forgive to where it is not in my mind as one of the things that is defining me anymore. And it doesn't have to be something big like that. I just feel like once you address the pain, the pain lessens the more that you keep chipping away, right? I don't know, there's that that Japanese, you know, the vase where it's like, when it breaks and then you fill it with gold in the cracks, that's kind of what you're doing. You're just rebuilding your life chip by chip as you go through this work. I've worked on my relationship with money. So and that's one of the things I you know, mentioned. I, it's important you work on relationships with actual people. And as you start to do that, you learn how to apply it to anything else. The work is the continuation of the work. 
All right. Well, Victoria, we're just about out of time. I'd like to thank you for being on the show today. You provided some great information on grief recovery. And how best can someone reach out to you to find out more about what you do? All the links for all the things is on my website, theunleashedheart.com. Um, I'm on Instagram at The Unleashed Heart. Social links are on my site as well. I'm on LinkedIn too. Yeah, I got free ebooks on there, um, uh, an energy quiz, like learn your energy type, what leaks it, what nurtures it. Lots of good stuff on there. Perfect. Thanks again. We'll link to all that in the show notes. And thank you everyone for tuning in today. Don't forget to follow the Agent of Wealth on the platform you listen from and leave us a review of the show. We're currently accepting new clients. And if you'd like to schedule a one-on-one consultation with our advisors, please do so at boutisfinancial.com backslash call. Thank you for listening to the Agent of Wealth podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered represents the views and opinions of the guests and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Boutis Financial. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for professional financial planning and investment advice. Always seek the advice of your financial advisor or other qualified financial service provider with any questions you may have regarding your investments and financial planning.